Welcome to the Spirit Centered Business Podcast, where we blend the spiritual with the practical for supernatural results. Now, here's your host, Berlin Newby. Well, hello there. Welcome to Spirit Centered Business. I'm Berlin Newby, and I am excited and honored to welcome Stella Payton to the show. Thank you so much for being here, Stella. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. So I've been looking forward to this. I know, I know. We met each other in uh, OFBA, our Father's Business Alliance. Yes. And when I heard you speak, I'm like, oh my gosh, this woman is absolutely brilliant. I need to get, I need to just know you, first of all. And then second of all, I wanted to get you on the show. So we're kind of doing it in a little bit of a reverse order. So everybody gets to watch me getting to know you. How about that? <laughs> And it works. However, however it happens, it just, just as long as it works. Yes. And it will, it will. So, oh my goodness, you you have a lot of stuff going on and I want to get into what you're currently teaching people and sharing with the world, but let's get, do a little bit of your story first. So tell us a little bit about you and how you're weaving your spiritual life into your business or how you got out of a church box if you were ever in one. I really don't know that backstory. Well, um, let's see, where do I start? Well, I've been in business for decades. I've been self-employed for almost 30 years. So my work has always been an extension of my life. I've never had the you know, I've never really had the go to job, you know, go to get up, get dressed, go to work thing. I've been a consultant uh, since 1997 is when I launched my own business. But prior to that, I had been an independent contractor from, from, for a number of years. And uh, so I, uh, unlike many women, I, I remember as a young adult female thinking, one day when I have kids, I don't, I want to have my own business. So I never have to take, say to my kid, oh, I can't go to your band concert because I have to work or I can't go with you on your field trip because I just never, that never resonated with me. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and, uh, and it happened. That is so good. A lot of people would love to know how you made that happen because I know some of them are still struggling to get out of corporate. Uh, let's see. <laughs> how did, well, how did that happen? It, well, it wasn't intentional. Uh, well, it was, but it wasn't. Uh, so an exercise I did when I was probably in my early 20s, I don't even know where I read it. I, somewhere I came across this idea of just writing down all the things you want to do in your life. And so, you know, as a 21, 22 year old, still, you know, wrapping up college, I made this list of things that I wanted to do, places I wanted to go, uh, you know, nations. I mean, just, just, just random. They said, just write it all down, just get it all on the paper. So I did. And Oddly enough, about 25 years later, I went back and I read that list and it was astonishing how much I, of, of what was on that list I had done and the places I had been, the travels I had done. It's, it's really fascinating how powerful uh, just writing things down and how it begins to shape your, your steps. Now, how you get there isn't necessarily... Uh, the easiest route, because I had more than my share of challenges, like, like everybody. But the ultimate journey, the, the destination isn't really defined by the journey. Really, the journey really shapes the destination. So you become in the process of doing so. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. Awesome. So where were you in your spiritual walk when you made that list? Well, I grew up, I'm a, I'm a church kid. So okay. I grew up in church. I was born in church. I was the okay. pew baby laying on the, on the blanket in church asleep while, you know, church is going on. So my whole life was really defined by our family's connection to church. Mm -hmm. um, my parents were, were deeply committed members. I grew up in the church of God in Christ. I, I love my heritage. I love the the strength of my culture, my black church culture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then growing up in Pentecostal 
church of God and, you know, that's a sanctified church. So, you know, you don't wear, you don't wear pants, you don't wear makeup. You know, I'd be going to hell today with all this lipstick on. I mean, you know. so, uh, you know, we grew up, that was, that was the environment that, that we grew up in. And so um, as I became an adult, you know, when you grow up in it, there are things about your heritage that helped, that help shape who you are. And, but then when you're, you know, you're a teenager and you're 16, 17, and you, you're feeling all the rules and the regulations, you learn, there's a part of you that loves it. It's a love hate relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up in that. And then as I left home and uh, we had, we had, we had a tumultuous childhood in some respects, because uh, we had domestic violence in my house. Mm. And, uh, you know, my father, my father was the, was a child who watched his father be murdered. Mm. And those happened, then he was orphaned. His mother left he and his sister with some relatives while she went to try and go find another life. And for several years, they kind of were bounced around from relative to relative. And you can imagine what that would do first seeing your parent seeing your father your idol killed and then your whole life you know you being a uh, somewhat of a prosperous african american for the era that they were in and then all of a sudden your your everything your farm your lifestyle is stolen so he my my father had that as a backdrop and so he had issues like most of us and we grew up with that. And then when I left home, I was one of those kids as if I couldn't get I couldn't get away from church fast enough. Now I still went to church, mm -hmm. but a lot of the controls that we experienced as you know young adults in the sanctified church, you know, some of those could, it was free to it felt good to get away from them. You know, I could wear pants. I, you know, I've been to church, my I can wear pants if I want to. You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have always loved business. I knew when I graduated from high school and I went to college that I wanted to do some form of business. And my degree was in media. And so I did radio, television and film. And I always knew that I would be doing some form of media because it came natural to me. Sure. And um, that's where the bulk of my, the foundation of my story started. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I graduated from college, I, I ended up going on a world tour and I toured for over, for a, over a year, actually, I finished my own tour. And then I went back with the organization that I had toured with and I did what was called setup cities. And oh, one of the wow. setup cities that we did was we set up a Super Bowl halftime show fun stuff i mean i'm just oh, wow. amazing stuff yeah that sounds like a lot of fun it was so much fun we we were in, we were super bowl 20 that year i think that was 1985 <laughs> i think wow it, what was the halftime show it was uh, it was called it was a group called up with people it was called beat of the future i remember it oh wow interesting yeah. and so we helped we were in new orleans for um for almost almost six months setting that up just amazing wow. and then after that I ended up moving to the midwest and then I moved to the west coast and I started working for uh, corporate I worked for Apple Computer Silicon Graphics now I was a contractor and at that time they hired everybody as a contractor before you could get in the door. You had to work as a contractor for, you know, six months, a year, and then you prayed for an opening. Well, I worked as a contractor with a lot of different companies, but I never, they never hired me full time. And, uh, and that's how I started. That's, that was the beginning of starting my own business. Okay. Yes. All right. So how did your spirituality play into those early years of, Coming well, you got to remember, this is the young adults, you know, 22, 23, 24 years old. I always went to church. I was always a part of a church. But, but there were seasons. Like church was separate than Yeah, just, there's, there's okay. church and then there's the rest of your life. You go to church right. on Sunday right. and then you have the rest of your life. Okay. Uh, yeah. I always had a relation. I've always had a relationship with God. Now I've always felt connected to the Lord. I've never, in fact, one of the things that I tell young people even now is I have, I have no knowledge. My spirit, my soulish, my soul has no knowledge apart from God. 
because my mother was spirit filled when she was carrying my brother. So the child who was born before me, uh, my mom received the Holy Spirit to carry my brother. And so my spirit man was accustomed to hearing or hear her pray, even in the womb. She was mm. praying in the spirit, even as a, as an infant, as a small child, I remember my mom, you know, I, she was a seamstress. And so she'd be at the sewing machine praying in the Holy ghost and I'd be on the floor, you know, getting fabric scraps, making clothes for my Barbie dolls, you know? Yes. So, so it was normal. It was like my norm. So mm-hmm. I don't, I, you know, I never, well, I shouldn't say I never, we, when it comes to like walking away from God, I didn't experience that. Mm -hmm. There were some times when I felt like, God, where are you? Um, Mm -hmm. But there was a part of me that always knew he was there. And so I prayed my whole life. I was spirit filled as a teenager. I, so it's not, you know, I, I I don't have any, I don't have any, I don't have any God where are you, that, that, that God absence story where you just, you know, you leave God and everything falls to crap. Well, there are areas of my life that were out of control, but God was always there. There were things that I went through that were really hard, but he was always there. He was, I've, I've never had that feeling of God has left me. I always felt like I know you're there. Why are you hiding yourself? I don't know, but you really need to show up right now because I need you, you know? Um, And that's kind of my, my conversation with him. Oh, wow. That's good. So what are you doing now? And when did you start that? Well, okay. So for those people who want to know the whole, the, the story of this kind of evolution, I have a, a video on YouTube called my testimony. Okay. And it tells the story of, um, this is one of my first books called accessing the windows of heaven. Mm-hmm. And I was one, because I grew up in church, I used to, I've always tithe and you gave, but I never saw the level of prosperity that I heard people talking about. And I had a conversation with God about that one day. And I was like, you know, well, what is up with that? I said, I've been tithing my whole life and I'm still struggling. I don't get it. What's, what is up with this? And so in the course of having that conversation, God says, I, and he began to teach me some things about how prosperity happens. And the passage that he gave me was Jeremiah 17, five, where he talks about um, you know, you hear that, that scripture in the Bible where it says, you know, in Malachi, you're cursed and cur- and, I, and that's like, God, you curse people. I don't understand it. What? And it's like, I read, he said, read it again. And I read it again. And I was like, he said, read it again. I read it again. And he said, read it again. I read it again. I said, okay, you keep telling me to read this. What am I supposed to be getting? And then he goes, he said, go to Jeremiah 17, five. And that passage says, cursed be the man that trusts in man who makes flesh his arm whose heart departs from the Lord. He shall be like a heath in a desert. He shall not see when good comes. Mm -hmm. He will, he will. And so when I began, when I looked at that, I was like, oh, wait a minute. So the curse is not something that you do. It's the acquisition of a mental state that has seven different consequences. And so the first consequence is the first mental state is misplaced trust. Cursed be the man who trusts in man. So if you're trusting people, you know, some weak things in there, it's not going to happen. Cursed be the man who trusts in man, who makes flesh his arm. So now you're in a spirit of self-reliance. You're trying to do it yourself. Whose heart departs from the Lord. Well, we know what scripture says about that. It says that uh, where your treasures are, there will your heart be also. So if your heart's not with God, there are elements of God's divine nature that you don't get access to. So when we are, when our heart is where he is, then we get access to his nature, which you become like the people you spend time with. And so you get access to his divine nature and it's his divine nature is rooted in abundance. So everything God is, is it's all copious. It's abundant. And his desire, he's always wanted three things, worship, relationship, and souls. So he wants relationships 
and in the relationships he wants our worship, not because he's arrogant or egotistical, but you become like the one. He wants us to become like him. So we become like that which we admire and we adore. We're drawn to it. We replicate it. We emulate it. And that's how we take on his nature. Mm, so, so yeah. Good. yeah. So in the course of that journey, I ended up, uh, I, I got pregnant out of wedlock when I was um, a young adult. And at that time, that's when, you know, people were really pushing abortion. And I decided I don't want to, I want to keep my child. Smartest thing I ever did. Because he's the, I mean, he had, the, my son has been the most instrumental person in helping me become like God, helping me become like Christ. Wow. He, he inspired so much of that God-shaped heart development. It's just, uh, I love that. Not, and children can do that for you. Absolutely. We, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so we, we stepped into that journey and I prayed and God showed me those components. And he says, I'm going to teach you how to walk through each of these. And then I'm going to show you how to step into your own level of, uh, how into a new level of prosperity for you. And he did. And in the course of doing that, shortly after that uh, revelation, um, I had launched my own business. I had launched my own consultant company and was in Southern California doing very well, had gone through a season of being on welfare. Uh, we were evicted. It just, it's just, is ugly, but it was a part of the process because through that journey, it shaped, it shaped my understanding of who God is and the fact that yes, he is always there and that it's learning to hear how he speaks and learning all of the ways that he talks to us, all of the ways he, he, he gives us these conversations with our future. So we see ourselves now and as we become. So I, 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 I enjoy God. I really do. It's, it's, it, yeah. Oh, Stella, that's so precious. Wow. So, well, first of all, your book, um, Accessing the Windows of Heaven, did I get that right? Yeah, that was one of the first books that I wrote okay. um, years ago. It's, uh, it is still available as a download. Okay. All right. And what is your website? StellaPayton.com. Okay, excellent. We will definitely put that in the show notes for our peeps and, and the, the link to the book there. And so, okay, so you're in Southern California and you started your own business. This was after you went through being on welfare and being evicted and all of this other stuff. So what kind of the consultancy, what kind of consulting were you doing? Well, one of my back, my, uh, a big part of my background was in human resources. I was a human resources generalist. Oh, okay. And so we started out with, you know, that's how I ended up working at Apple and Amdahl. I see. Okay. And I graphics and recruiting to put that in, and yeah, in there. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we, I went from that to when I actually, um, when I had my son, I took time off. I got ready to go back to work and nobody would hire me. I mean, I couldn't, find, I couldn't find a secretary's position at $8 an hour. I mean, nobody would hire me. I, I and in the course of doing that, God spoke to me and he said, I want you to start your own business. I want you to start your own consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, I don't even have a computer. And he said, that's okay. I'll walk you through it. And so he did. And so step by step, everything that I needed, he started to show me how how we draw into our lives the things that we need with intentionality and it works by faith and it's it's also god is very relational and so he is very keen on us understanding that everything we need is on the other side of relationship so that any lack or any insufficiency is an indicator that there is a missing relationship or missing connection or tie and that if you can establish relationships and connect with people that God brings into your path, he usually brings provisions on the, on the trails of relationships. Mm, that is so good and so true. Yeah, very good. Awesome. So what's next? <laughs> <laughs> Well, after I after I launched my business in Southern California and uh, it did well, um, my son was about to start school, 
and I uh, I had had some experience with the Los Angeles Unified School District, which you know I was like, you know, that's a beast I don't want to tackle. Oh. And so I made the decision to move back to Mississippi when my son was little, when when he started right when he was in kindergarten. Mm. And uh, just as he was coming out of kindergarten into first grade, we moved back to Mississippi. Smartest move I ever made because we he got to grow up, um, spend his, his developmental years with my parents when I would travel and do consulting and, you know, here and there, and, you know, from the West Coast to the East Coast, he was staying with my mom and dad, which was just priceless. Just oh, priceless. that was really, yeah, yeah, that was such a important time of his life to have that connection and i bet your parents loved it too they did they did um, yeah he he's he was a good he's a happy kid he had a great life he yeah great life. Okay. and but fast forward to um and so when i moved back to mississippi that's when i started investing in real estate i bought one property then i bought another one then another one and then another one uh, and at one point in there, I got married and we ended up with about 17 pieces of real estate. We had uh, multiple businesses, did very well. Um, uh, marriage didn't last, but we were, we were very prosperous. We did extremely well financially. And um, on the heels of that, after my divorce, I remember saying to the Lord, and that, that's, again, that's the other thing that's so important that your our walk with god it's real everything we do it it's god is woven into it when you are literally walking with god in a way where your your interactions are okay i'm gonna get up i'm gonna pray this morning and then i'll be back tomorrow and talk to god again you know it's not like that with me i've it's almost like god is always a conversation running in the back of my mind i i constantly hear him talking to say yeah don't do that one do that one or, you know, I, I hear Holy Spirit in the back of my thoughts going, try that combination. And then try, and, oh, wow, this works, you know? Or I'll be writing something and I'll hear the, the exact phraseology necessary to communicate a specific thought. And he's always there. And so when I, as I started to really, you know, watch and observe other people, I, they didn't have that. I, and that's when I realized uh, early on that, you know, that connection that I had with God was not, it's not common. It's not everybody that knew that. And that's what led to the Kayo circle is you, these aren't these, this quality of life, it's a learned thing. And there are some things you learn in the context of relationships. And that's why God, he is completely relational. He allows you to go through crap a lot of times so that it causes us to lean into him so that we can build and develop the relationship with him in the course of connecting. And you get the solutions and not because you want to know God because he's going to give you secrets, but when you know God, he tells you secrets. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's a part of, of knowing who he is. And then I started learning this, this whole uh, Hebrew word thing. And then I, and I, I met people like uh, Daniel Cook. Yeah. And, and, and so you're seeing people, they, say, they don't call him God, they call him Yahweh. And I was like, oh, so your name is Yahweh too. Well, okay, I knew that, but it never really occurred to me to call you Yahweh because I've always thought of you as, you know, God, my father, my, you know. And then I started to study what that means. And it's like, oh, that matters to you. Wow. You know, and if it matters to God, it should matter to me. If it matters to me, it automatically matters to God. That's, you know, I, I didn't come up with that one. That's Bill Johnson quote. I love yeah. Bill Johnson. So. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, wow. There's, there's so many different ways we could go. Well, you did mention Kyle Circle. So, that that's a fairly recent program that you started right so what was before that what kind of led you into helping people understand the kayo lifestyle even if you didn't have that word but i i know that there's a, a place where you you were not all about doing hr you started bringing people into what god called them to do so but my whole financially, and I told the Lord, I said, you know, Lord, I know I love church. Church is good, but church people get on my nerves. I mean, church people can be really churchy. Yeah. And so 
I remember God saying to me, I had finished one book and um, I, I had, you know, I've, I've been writing for years. I had finished one book. And as I was thinking about what I was going to write next, I was just, you know, just having a conversation with the Holy Spirit about it. And, Holy Spirit, and so I was reading Proverbs 31 and I was reading it and I had, um, I don't know if you have the, the Dakes Bible. And I'm studying the Dakes Bible. And there's a section in the Dakes Bible where it took Proverbs 31 and it actually broke down all of the dimensions of that of that of that chapter. And it and when I looked at it, my entrepreneurial eyes locked in on all of the entrepreneurial elements of who this woman was. And that was fascinating to me. And I had not seen it before because growing up in a Pentecostal church, you think, oh, you know, Proverbs 31 is the scriptures that all the preachers take to beat the women in the wife shape. This is what a wife ought to look like. We're going to beat you with Proverbs 31 until you are a good wife taking care of your husband and your children, you know. Uh so I never really, you know, I was like, you know, I didn't get married until I was 39. I, I had been in business since literally since I, since I graduated from high school, I've been in corporate America in different capacities. And so it just didn't fit. It didn't my traditional paradigm for Proverbs 31 that I had been bequeathed from my heritage didn't fit me. Mm -hmm. It did not fit who I was. And so one day I'm just reading it. And it's fascinating. And a few months after this was around 2013, God speaks to me, says, I want you to write a book about Proverbs 31. I was like, no, I'm not. I don't want to write a book about Proverbs 31. I, and so I said, but I said, okay, but you know, you're God. And I can't tell you what I'm not going to do. That's real stupid. So I'm going to try. So I started. And the first piece that I brought, they sucked. Just horrible, terrible writing. I said, this is garbage. This is not going to work. I'm not using this. I said, if you want me to write a book about Proverbs 31, you're going to have to give me a download. And I just kind of said, you got to give me a download. And I just kind of threw it out there. And I said, because this sucks. And I said, it's, I know it sucks and you know it sucks. This is not good. And I hate it when I wrote. But fast forward about a year later, uh, I uh, was, I had, okay, I had done something really bad. <laughs> really bad and I was like just repenting going God I'm so sorry I should have done that I just I'm just, just bad you know my marriage is falling apart I did some ugly stuff just bad just bad 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 and you know divorce is ugly so a divorce is horrible it's That's ugly horrible. and so you just do stupid when you're going through a divorce you just do stupid stuff right so um, I, after I did this bad thing and I told the guy, I said, God, what am I going to do? I need help. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing myself in the situation. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, so I'm crying out to God. And literally within a day, someone sends me an email to Katie Souza's Healing the Soul. And so I go, I just deep dive into Katie Souza. So now I'm studying and praying and, and uh, about a, about, a week after I did the Katie Sousa healing the soul fast, mm -hmm. I'm on my Facebook page, digging through stuff. And I see a, a friend of mine tells me, oh, I'm moving. She messages me. She says, oh, I'm moving to Tumball, Texas. I'm like, Tom, you're moving from Connecticut, I mean, not from, from Camden, New Jersey to Tumball, Texas. What's doing that? And remember, everything happens when God is woven into the course of your life, there are no incidents, there are no accidents. Everything God does, he's intentional. He's totally intentional, everything he does. Yes. So I said, well, you know, I'm going to go online and see if I can find a church in Tumbaugh. I'm being a good little friend. I said, let me see if I can find a church in Tumbaugh. So I'm looking nothing in Tumbaugh. Later that night, this was a Saturday night, two o'clock in the morning, I'm on Facebook scrolling down and another one of my friends who's in Connecticut on her page pops up women on the front line and then in big oh. letters across the front tom ball texas oh. patricia king was launching oh. she had just taken over james gall's former wife's um, uh, michaela's ministry uh women on the front line i and remember patricia that was taking it over and tom ball texas was one of the first events that she launched Wow. Well, of course, I'm looking, okay, this is God. I said, obviously, I'm supposed to go tumble. Obviously. I mean, why else would he show that? Why else would my friend be moving from Camden, New Jersey to tumble? Now, why is this, this particular occurrence important? Because when you're walking with God, 
He is so into the details and he loves and, and he loves for us to connect and engage with him in a way till we get the, oh, wow, because it's, it's exciting to him. I can just see him. I can see him sitting on his own. She got it. Look at her. Look at my little girl, you know. And so off to Tumball I go. I'm sitting in a meeting, listening to Patricia King. I leave. We take a break. I walk to her table and there is a CD on the table, a CD series. And it's called Pray It For. It's bright yellow. And that night I had on a bright yellow t-shirt, same color as the CD. And I was reading, I was like, oh, man, I really need this. And then I looked at prices, oh, you know, I'll get it, I'll, I'll get the download. So I come back and I look at this, I, 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 Patricia gets up to speak. And the first thing she has in her hand is that CD. And, and she's about to give it away. And I just pop up and go, oh, that's mine. <laughs> I had to put a little all these people, and the whole and I didn't even real. It came out before I realized. And Patricia's like, "Oh, you're yellow. You're wearing yellow. It's yellow. I believe God wants you to have this. Come on down here and get it." And when I got six feet from her, from her, the Holy Spirit hit her, and she began to prophesy over my life. It was amazing. I mean, she prophesied the next twenty years of my life. And, oh my gosh, I have goosebumps and when I all over when me. went back to the table, the girl that was at the table, um, uh, Andrea, who's in Cambodia now, Andrea says, you need this. And she hands me a sheet about an internship with Patricia. And it's like two grand. And I look at it, I see the $2,000. I said, oh, no, this, I, this ain't for me. I'm not. <laughs> and so she says, no, take it. Take it. Pray about it. Ask the Lord. So I go and I pray about it. I said, if you want me to go to this, you paying for it. I'm not paying for this. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, do the application. So I did the application and I put it all out there. I, I put <laughs> almost, I put my, my, my marriage falling apart, you know, the church stuff. I just put all the good, the bad, the ugly. I said, I know y'all going to turn me down. So I really don't care because you know, I'm only doing this because God is making me, he's making me do this. And it's true because I, at that point I felt like I, you know, I, I, I was, I felt like a failure in church. I was married to a pastor. My marriage fell apart, mm -hmm. The the, I felt like the church people hated me. I, it just, it just, it was bad. It's just bad. Yeah. And so, you know, typically when a marriage, a church marriage ends, the church is bequeathed to the husband and the wife is usually the one that's pushed away, that has to go and rebuild her life. And for me, that was my experience. Wow. And so I, my grid for church at that point was, I, I don't have to go to church to love God. I can, I can connect with God, you know? So you, you create all of these protective mechanisms, yeah. not realizing that the church is supposed to be a place where you get healed and whole and restored. And um, God did that, but he did that for me, but he didn't do that for me in a church. He surrounded me with Patricia King's ministry. I ended up going to that internship. The Lord spoke to me and gave me three names of three people. And all three of those people gave me the entire amount that I needed for my tuition. Um, and then I said, well, Lord, that's the tuition, but what am I going to do about the rest of this cost? I still need another $2,000. I got to have a place to live. He says, go to your computer. Remember that book I told you to write, The Kaya Woman, about Proverbs 31? He says, I'm going to give you a download. Oh. And I went to my computer. I started writing on October 3rd. I finished December 19th. And for that entire window of time, it was, I mean, all I did was eat sleep and write. I would write until my eyes, it was just a matter of getting it out of my spirit into my mind onto paper. And when I finished it, it was so, I didn't realize that God was writing out. I was writing while I'm writing the book, the book is writing me and I'm seeing the patterns and the, the ideas of how so much of that woman that personification of the bride of Christ was woven into my life and into my experience. And so um, I, um, I, I went that, I went, I finished a book. I did the internship. The book paid for the internship. It covered the, all of the remaining costs. 
And at that moment, I realized that a lot of what I was walking out in my life, I was walking out that road. The real estate that I was buying, uh, even when my marriage fell apart, the I, I remember praying, telling the Lord, God, I don't want to walk away with anything you don't want me to have. What do you want me to walk away with? And I will only ask for that. And that's what I did. And the, the peace, the wholeness that came after that, the difficulty of that journey, even being intact. And so as I'm walking through this, the Kaya woman, the community was born after that. And mm-hmm. so the whole Kaya Circle community, because so many women don't have a place where they can go and learn the process of relating to God in ways that allow you to be fully who you are, where all of your identities, you don't have to pick, okay, I get to be the church wife, but I can't be the businesswoman. I get to be the businesswoman, but I don't get to be. And so you have this rankings. You t- we take all of the identities that we're supposed to manifest, and we, we, we think we have to pick and choose, and you don't. You're all of them. You get to be all of them, just like Jesus. He's the lion. He's the lamb. He's the ancient of days. He's the son of God. He's, he's all of them. And he doesn't have to pick which identity he wants to manifest. He manifests them all, all of them. And he manifests multiple to those identities simultaneously. And we're made in his image. We get to do the same thing. And that's the beauty of Proverbs 31. The Kaya woman. She, You don't have to take a part of yourself and say, I don't get to be that because I have to be this. No, you get to be that and this. And if you look at it almost like a tapestry, you see how one thread changes color as the scene changes. That's how our lives are. Mm. When I was a mother with a young child, there were certain parts of my tapestry that had to reflect the strength of mother because my child needed me. But as he grew, the color of those threads began to change because his needs for me changed. And then I had freedom to move into other branches of the tapestry of the business that I was interested in. And so I remember when my son was 10 years old and I would go to closings with mortgages and I'm closing on a mortgage and we're signing all the documents. And you got this little 10, this little round head, 10 year old boy sitting in there at a mortgage closing because I wanted him to understand that this is an extension, that, that what I am creating, it is ultimately going to become a part of your generational blessing. So, wow. Yeah. That is so good. I, I'm, unfortunately, we need to take a break here, but let's pick it up in the next segment because the generational blessing, oh, that's a great place to start uh, the next segment. Do you agree? Absolutely. Agree okay. All right. Well, thank you, audience. Thank you so much. I, I love you and I appreciate your support. And if you loved Stella and everything that she said today, just make sure that you visit the links to her website and get her books and everything else that she's doing. Share this out uh, wherever you see a button for liking and sharing and subscribing and sending an emoticon and whatever, wherever else you want to click that button, give us some comments, show us some love how much you love Stella and we will see you next time and until then stay spirit centered peace out thank you for listening to spirit centered business with Berlin Newby be sure to like subscribe and share with your friends the next stage of doing business by being spirit centered is coming together in collaboration working with spiritual principles and knowing our destiny Join our tribe at spiritcenteredbusiness.com and we'll catch you on the next broadcast. Peace out.